Hello, I am David W. Parker, and this is Programming Today I Learned. We're going to be looking at Svelte and transitioning, migrating from Sapper to SvelteKit. I've done this for a couple applications already, real quick, just to see how it went. Um, one is my public-facing one I'm building, the other being this YouTube tutorial series. Um, before we dive in, let me just throw a couple things out. I've started a Patreon. I'd love your support in the future. I also have a newsletter um, at programmingtil.com. I'd love you to sign up and get uh, notified about new episodes. So in this application, we're going to go ahead and be updating our tutorial that we've been doing so far, our application that we're building. It has been in Sapper up to date, and now we're going to do SvelteKit with it. Let's go ahead and take a look. So the first thing to note is that this is a few episodes ahead, so there's some things in the application that it does um, that aren't don't exist yet. So the next few episodes, we'll be catching up on this in the Sapper app. So that being said, let's go say what those are. The settings form doesn't exist yet, as well as having a username and like this display name. So if you don't know where those are coming from, you could just check out this branch. Otherwise, those are coming in the upcoming episodes. But this is the SvelteKit app. So we can go in here to the About page. And if I go to About Svelte here and this one, click Save. And bam, it already has the exclamation. It is fast, the hot module reloading. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're gonna follow the migration guides today. So let's just see what we need. So the first thing is, let's just walk down the list. So inside of our package JSON, first thing we had to do is I had to add this type module. And then it says remove POCA, express, and any other thing that you have uh, via serve and compression. I had all of those things. So I have my git k up here and you can see the differences of what I updated. We'll go through each of those as we walk through. Dev dependencies, we're going to remove sapper, replace it with at uh, js forward slash kit, as well as vite, and then an adapter. And then all of our scripts, we're going to change from the sapper build to svelte kit build, and sapper dev should be svelte kit dev. Additionally, svelte kit start. So let's go ahead and see. I have vite down here, dev dependencies now. As Svelte here, I have uh, I have Tailwind JIT now down here. I've added the Svelte Kit adapter for Versal, which I haven't done yet, but we will use later, as well as Static, as well as just Svelte Kit. I believe I can get rid of these CSS loaders, uh, file loader, etc. I haven't yet though. And then um, ensure that after you've done this portion. Before you NP install, you're going to want to clear out your package lock. When I was upgrading my second application, I had a much older version of Svelte, and it was throwing some errors because the Svelte version didn't get upgraded, uh, even though the new stuff was added. That's something to be aware of. In dependencies here, uh, basically got rid of all of the ones that it mentioned, including Boca, Express, Serve, Compression. And then up here, replacing each of our uh, Sapper lines with SvelteKit. Uh, anywhere we had Sapper, we put SvelteKit instead. And you can walk through, you can see here, that's exactly what I changed. I removed Helmet, uh, a few others as well. Next thing I did was I added a post CSS config. We'll do that in a second here. Yes, so majority conveyance source routes, but several project files will need to be moved. So I got rid of my Webpack config. I was using Webpack before, you may be using Rollup, and we're just gonna be replaced with a Svelte config CJS. So let's look at that. We have this new Svelte config CJS. I'm going to require the static adapter for now. And I have a commented outline for Versal when we decide to go ahead and push to Versal in the future. The target is, uh, Pounds felt now, so we can take a look at that in a moment. We also said if you're using plugins for not handled things by Vite, you could create a Vite config. I'll get to that in just a moment. My issues around the Vite config. Source client JS was deleted, so I this file is gone. And then source uh, server was also deleted. You can use the hooks module to implement session logic. So let's go look at that real quick. We have a hooks index, which has been added. 
So inside of our source here, hooks, index. So I have an API endpoint and a debug mode. One thing to be aware of, and this is something I learned about Vite, is you have to have Vite underscore. I'm not a huge fan of this because if I try to switch away from Vite, that means I have to update all of these environment variables everywhere. It's kind of a weird thing, but that is their way to make sure you do not expose environment variables that you're not meaning to expose unless you do it purposely. So I understand where they're coming from. Um, so under my environment variables here, you have VEPI, port, debug. So that is how you implement the hooks. It's going to have a git session function that's going to be exported and returning anything that you want in there. It has a git uh, context that is provided with it. And we can look more at that. It has a git context you can use as well as the git session within the hooks. And I'm not going to go too details right that for now. Just know that for our application, the only thing we needed was the session with the API endpoint, really. So back to the migration guide. Service worker, um, replacing the sapper service worker, and then these equivalents. So routes has been removed, shell is now build, et cetera, et cetera. And then you're using dollar sign service worker. So in our service worker here, we have dollar sign service worker, and then timestamp and build. And again, build is now instead of shell. Source template has been renamed to app. So I went ahead and renamed this. And then we went ahead and removed sapper base. We removed sapper script. We removed sapper styles. Then we replaced sapper head with svelte head and sapper HTML with svelte body. So we did all of those. The other thing is div ID is sapper is no longer needed, but you can mount through a specific target. So I had to up because I was providing a target in our svelte here. And again, you can not provide target. Um, I had to update this to svelte as well from sapper, otherwise it wouldn't load. The next thing is we have source node modules as a common pattern for your internal library. I didn't really follow that before and I didn't realize that was a common thing. So basically where I had components and shared, which were just within source directly, uh, they had said you should use node modules. That's just really weird to me to use node modules for that. But they now have this lib library. Uh, so I moved uh, all of my components and shared into this lib. To, uh, so this, this doesn't work with Vite, so you use source lib instead. So that's what we did. We created a new folder, and I moved components under there, and as well as shared. Renamed some files. So we have underscore error is now dollar sign error. Underscore layout is dollar sign layout. A prefix is now you know, it's your own private components. So let's go ahead and see for our routes here. We have dollar error now, dollar layout. Imports, go to prefetch and prefetch routes from sapper app should be replaced with app navigation. Stores from sapper app should be replaced. See the stores section. Don't know why they didn't just put it right there, but they didn't. You could see this is now going to be provided from SvelteKit under app stores. So let's click at each of those real quick. So, that's a good example of that. We don't have too many uh, files here, which is nice. Sign up here. So here's one we're using the session. So we're going to grab the session from app stores, and that is the new area rather than sapper slash app. Reload has been renamed to load in its APS changed. Instead of two arguments, page and session, there's a single argument that includes both along with fetch. So you don't use this.fetch anymore, as well as a new context. There is no more this object, and consequently no this fetch, this error, this re redirect. Instead, it now returns an object that contains props alongside other things. Lastly, if a page has a load, make sure to return something, otherwise you will get a 404 not found. This is something that went and bit me in the butt here. In my sign-in, um, we were conf uh, checking confirmation token and confirming. Uh, the first note that I wrote here is it attempts to 
you need to return an empty string. So if you, let me just comment this so you can see the syntax highlighting. You have to return an empty string there, otherwise you'll return a 404. Second, the other thing to note is this function runs both during clearance uh, server side as well as in the client. So I had to end up removing this and putting it into an on mount below because it was making multiple crest, uh, requests against something that is not item potent, meaning if you made a subsequent request on the same resource, it would return a different response. You can only confirm your token once in this application. So I had to move this functionality down below. But that is something to note is preload is now load and you need to return something there. Next up, we have stores, which were mentioned already, routing, some URLs. So if you were using prefetch anywhere on a tags, you need separate a separate prefetch is now socket prefetch and as well as no scroll. Um, all relatives were based against the base URL before, unless the base path options are used. It's no longer the case. So URLs are resolved against the current page. So that is something that is important to note if you're making API requests within your own application. So then we have in Sapper server routes, which are to record receive, uh, had nodes HTTP module. It is designed to be agnostic. So we're no longer doing that. Um, I don't have any of those in this application, so I won't be showing that at this time. And then it has Svelte integrations. So they have a very short migration guide here. I found that a lot of things that were there um, were kind of uh, missing for a few things. Let me go ahead and continue on with a few of the things that I didn't show. Go to is under navigation. Here's the go to under navigation page and session. Okay, so I had said that I had problems with the Vite uh, configuration, and they have under their Vite uh, uh, configuring here, they have this resolve alias, which is what I was trying to use based off a bunch of different GitHub um, issues that I saw. And I could not, for the life of me, get it to resolve in the same way that I had under Webpack. So if we we're going to look at my Webpack config here down to the very bottom, I used to have uh, CMP as a shorthand for source components, as well as components, routes, and shared. I could not get that to work. So all of my individual uh, imports are now under lib. So I'm using the lib one. I'm also using the full spelled out components because that's what I spelled it out as here rather than CMP. So that was something to note uh, and that came up that wasn't in the documentation. Another thing was I needed to, V required me to put the dots felt everywhere. Um, that was something that uh, came up consistently was if it was an actual felt thing, I needed to import that as felt. That was throughout the app. And let's see what else came up. Um, so anywhere, yeah, you can see most of these are just changing my imports in a lot of places uh, or moving files around. So for me, the biggest ones were creating this lib directory, moving most of my components under there, importing as dots felt, and importing from lib components. That ended up being the number one change that I had to make. Under the APIs, I did have to make changes there. That's under shared. This is again based off the real world example. So right here, we're just checking to see if we have fetch and if you still use it. Otherwise, just use await the import uh, of node fetch and then use that instead. Um, before we were able to use process browser to check if we're in the browser, we can no longer do that. So we're checking for not undefined. That was a minor change. Anywhere that you have process dot uh, something, we don't have process anymore. So down below here, I'm going to use this magical import made it a e and v. That's to get to the environment variables that is provided by Vite. So I have the Vite debug here. That was a change that I needed to make throughout. So no process. 
And I don't think that was mentioned on the migration guide either. Yeah, so nothing there mentioned. What else came up? Scroll down and look. Oh, Sapper, so we don't have process ENV here, but we do have app ENV. Um, again, that wasn't referenced in the migration guide, but under the error here, I'm checking to see if we're in the dev environment. So that is available here and under dollars for app ENV. So that was a simple, simple change there. A big change for my application. So as you knew before, I had multiple Tailwind files with different post CSSs. I have not figured out how to do that yet with Vite. Um, you may have asked before why I did that. The reason, and I mentioned in previous video, is so I could have this nice uh, display and I have different color files for each of these. And I have my the rest of Tailwind as a separate um, file. So that way I'm only loading the core functionality of Tailwind once and I'm loading colors separately. And it's a great little widget and it allows my users to have whatever they want selected for their personality and only loading the minimal amount of information. So I won't have that quite yet. I do need to figure out how to do that, um, but I will. So with that being said, let's look at some of those changes very briefly. I'm using Tailwind GIT now. I know there are some issues with it, with some of the stuff that it provides. Um, that being said, I'm still using my extension of primary colors here. I am using this default extractor in purge now in my Tailwind config instead of in post CSS, which is where it was before. Um, this code right here, as well as the uh, Tailwind code, I found via uh, certain GitHub issues, I believe. I still have my post CSS up here, and um, I went ahead and updated to the same format, just not being used yet. I do still reference it in my package JSON to build based off of it, but we probably won't do that until it gets fixed. And that's why it's commented out here and here as well. Another thing to note is um, I do not believe that I remember the Reddit user offhand, um, but he wrote a fantastic write-up for his Svelte kit. In fact, it's right here. We'll give him credit because he did a great job. Posted by u slash s-n-i-r slash d-r-d. So he wrote all the whole thing here. And he wrote he had to change a forward slash before index. So um, if these had just indexes before, now they're uh, the forward slash. And that is mentioned in the migration guide about the base uh, URL right here. So that continuing on with our app. So I have the new Tailwind here, and then I have a new uh, Tailwind file. Um, just under source with the includes um, and then under my layout here I've gone ahead and imported that and that's going to go ahead and import that correctly um, and that is it for the migration it wasn't too hard there was a few gotchas here and there um, I had to make sure to import like SHA.256.js here, and then in a couple other random spots, like with this that felt. Um, but all in all, not too harsh. I will figure out how to do the multiple Tailwind file thing so I could have multiple color themes. Um, depending on, of course, the size of your application. I In this particular application, I don't have a lot under components and shared. Um, a couple of my other applications, I have a lot. And so it took a lot more time to go ahead and convert all of my import statements because, like again, I said, I couldn't get this resolve alias to work properly. So uh, go ahead and post your experiences in the comments, uh, on Twitter, whatever. Uh, subscribe and like, and we'll talk about how we can make this even better. Uh, thank you guys, and talk to you next time.